Lost media from the Animal Crossing series. Some of the stuff is really wild. So let's take a look at things that either have been partially found or may be lost forever. First up, Animal Crossing 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. This one's really interesting because there's actually an IGN page still active about this game and kind of summarizing what apparently occurred to it. The game is listed as canceled on IGN, but there's a lot of confusion when it comes to Animal Crossing 2. After Animal Crossing, Crossing first released, the game became very popular, there was a lot of talks about the game, so when there was word of a follow-up Animal Crossing game being developed, multiple gaming news outlets reported on Animal Crossing 2 as being in development. There was even some screenshots of the game released which look similar to Animal Crossing for the GameCube, but buzz about Animal Crossing 2 eventually would be sidelined once Animal Crossing DS was officially announced and there were screenshots of the game and eventually would get the tagline wild world and would release and from that point forward nobody really expected an Animal Crossing 2 to release. So what exactly was Animal Crossing 2 and where do these screenshots come from? Now a lot of stuff does get lost in translation but one thing we do know for certain is that in Japan a follow-up Animal Crossing game did release called Dobutsu no Mori E Plus which released in 2003 one whole year after the release of Animal Crossing in the West. Now since the Western release of Animal Crossing did add new features and new holidays, which differentiated itself from the Japanese releases on the N64 and the GameCube. This new iteration of an Animal Crossing game would release exclusively in Japan. It would not only include some of the new features, but have even more features added on on top of the base features that were featured in other versions of the game. For instance, Dobutsu no Mori E Plus or Animal Forest E Plus had new villagers, interface changes, brand new mechanics. Like this game was the first time a villager could become sick or the first game where you can actually set up a public works project for a furniture piece outdoors. This is the first game where two villagers could just have their own conversation and you could eavesdrop in. These features would all be brought later on into the Animal Crossing series, but only released in the Japan version, which still was just an upgraded version of the base Animal Crossing game. It's speculated that these outlets that reported Animal Crossing 2 were actually reporting on this Animal Forest E+, and maybe at one point, there was plans for this version of the game to make its way to the West in a translation and get those upgraded features, though it never ended up actually happening. So for the status of this game being lost media, and maybe there's an English localization version that never released out there, there really isn't enough evidence to support that. So we're going to lean on saying that this lost media is more debunked than anything else. Fortunately enough, if you've ever wanted to experience Animal Forest E plus but with an English translation. Fans have worked together over the years to make a fan made localization that translates the game to English though there are some interesting nuanced things that are probably errors because of the translation. The biggest fan translation of the Japanese Animal Crossing games is definitely the N64 Animal Forest translation though the E plus version for the GameCube does exist out there as well and it is kind of cool at the very least to see some of the things that we never got to see in this original game in the west side of things. But yeah, if you look at the game, it's definitely not the Animal Crossing 2 that was maybe initially announced. And while this one falls under debunked, it's not the case with the next one on our list. Next up, Osama Bin Laden's Animal Crossing Wild World Save Five. Yeah, I know. I thought the same thing the first time I heard of this existence. This next one's pretty wild and I don't even know where to start really, but back in 2017, the CIA publicly declassified thousands of files that were found on Bin Laden's hard drive, which was retrieved from his hideout in Abbottabad, Pakistan, after the killing of Osama Bin Laden in 2011. Now the really unsettling thing is as you go through the content found on the hard drive, there is just such a wide variety of disturbing things that can be found on the hard drive. There's apparently stuff ranging from extremist propaganda to other things that would get this video demonetized if I talked about them. There was even scanned images of his personal 
diary. But I guess during the decade that he was on the run, Bidlaw spent quite a bit of time playing video games. Within the contents of his hard drive, you can see directories for a library of games that were from his Steam account, but also directories or emulator that was on his computer. It didn't take too long after these files were discovered that people noticed that Osama had references to Animal Crossing Wild World, showing that at one point he likely had this game emulated on his computer. Now obviously with the subject matter here being so much darker, it did raise the curiosity of a lot of people who wondered what his town in Animal Crossing must have looked like. What did his house look like? What villagers did he have? And as you can see from this Reddit thread, there was an effort made by several different people to try to recover the save file off of the declassified files, though to this day nobody has been able to recover the files needed to salvage the save game file and be able to load it into an emulator and have it playable. One user reported trying three different DS emulators, not getting it to work, but suggested that if they could get the file formatted correctly into an NDS file, then possibly it could then load in. Others noted that the file size seemed too small to be a Nintendo DS save and suggested that it could be compressed, which would mean that the file would then need to be decompressed and formatted into a DS save file, which then could be ripped and loaded into an Animal Crossing emulation session. Some Redditors even tried opening up in a hex editor, but noted that the formatting was weird and suggested that the files relating to Animal Crossing Wild World at the very least looked different from the more common types of ways that these files and saves typically look. It is very possible that the files required to recover the save file are still in the classified files that the CIA still has, or it is possible that these files are hidden away somewhere in those declassified files and nobody's located them yet. Nonetheless, the likelihood of this town existing is still very high. The only issue is that getting the town to be recovered to explore is very, very challenging, making this one of the more disturbing and interesting lost media items on this list. Whew. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's look at something maybe a little bit more lighthearted. Many people already know about this, or maybe you don't know about this, but there was an Animal Crossing anime film that was released in the mid-2000s. It's not that bad, it's kind of based off of some of the stuff that's found in Wild World. And back in 2007, there was a calendar that released that promoted the film and had different pictures for many of the months found in this calendar. And while there are images of it showing that it does in fact exist and we can see what some of the calendar illustrations looked like, we don't actually have a clean archived re-upload of the calendar itself. Just these pictures that were taken, no scans of the actual calendar. One user on Reddit about a year ago posted about this, stating that the illustrations are rarer Animal Crossing art that would be nice to have preserved, and while they've sought after it for multiple years trying to find a resale of it, it never seems to pop up on resale websites. Still, this one's very interesting, one that I had no idea existed, but I'm all for preserving media, so perhaps if you have this calendar out there from the Japanese movie, maybe you could scan your images online and help preserve this forever. Nonetheless, this isn't fully lost media. It would probably fall under the status of partially found, but getting the whole scan would be really cool. Next, we'll look to Stage Debut, which is a lost build of a canceled Nintendo GameCube game. And while this one does involve Animal Crossing, it is sought after by the larger GameCube and Nintendo fan base as this was a game that was in development for the Nintendo GameCube and even shown off at E3 2003 and was rumored to be shelved sometime in 2004. Now the interesting thing is since this game was shown off at E3, we do know for a fact that there was a build of the game that was working to at least some extent since they showed the game off, with one of the big features of the game being the ability to take photos of faces using the Game Boy Advance's Game Eye peripheral then linking that to the Game Boy Advance link cable and importing the faces into the game. Now what's interesting is that from the footage we've seen, we know that the game would feature characters from various Nintendo titles like Wario and Pikmin. And even more interesting, we see Animal Crossing featured as
as well. There's this part where we can see a villager here, and there's even screenshots of other things where we can see the other villager and even the cat villager Olivia. There were even other screenshots that showed more characters from Animal Crossing, other animals dancing or whatever, and it seemed like this game would have a wide variety of fun and goofy moments starring Nintendo characters and also custom avatars that you imported, as we can see various Nintendo employees superimposed into these characters that look kind of cursed. And while we don't really know the extent of what this game would have been like, whether it would have just been a free inclusion for anyone who bought the Game Boy Advanced camera, or if it was going to be a standalone title, the interesting thing is this never, of course, released. It's likely partially due to the fact that the Game Eye never released either, so this whole game kind of would have been defunct. And when asked about this game in 2008, over five years after this was first shown off, Shigeru Miyamoto pointed to the introduction of Miis and the Mii channel on the Wii console as the spiritual evolution of that game. Now, over the years, we have seen Nintendo games that have been shown off at earlier E3s leak online with the builds that were used for E3. So it's still in the realm of possibility that at some point, the build of this game could be leaked online and players will be able to access what was in this planned game. Though until then, all we really have to look at is the nearly two decade old footage showing us an interesting game that would have featured Animal Crossing characters. A few years before this though, there actually was another video game title relating to Animal Crossing that was canceled by Nintendo. Now the game had the code name Cabbage, which was this unfinished game that is quoted online to have been similar to Tamagotchi, where the player would take care of some sort of creature and would have utilized the Nintendo 64 DD's internal clock to keep the game alive and playing even if you weren't playing the game. Now, apparently this game was far enough in development where it was supposed to make an appearance at Space World 2000. However, when the event came around, the game wasn't shown off and eventually it was canceled. It likely ended up being canceled due to the unpopularity of the Nintendo 64 DD with the fact that it was not even released in the US and there were a lot of games that were planned for the N64 DD that never ended up releasing. Nonetheless, Cabbage has been referenced in official interviews as having some source elements repurposed in Animal Crossing. Most notably, the day and night cycle where the game keeps going even when you're not playing. That was a really big selling point for Animal Crossing in the early days. No game had done something like that before. There were some magazine publications back in the day talking about this Cabbage project and also alluded to the fact that there would be items or toys that you could put down for your creatures to interact with. So it does sound like a lot of these concepts were eventually rolled into Animal Crossing, but also some fans have pointed out that these ideas could have also been one of the inspirations for Nintendogs, another Nintendo franchise that would come up a few years later on. There's a lot of video game historians out there who strongly believe Cabbage was possibly just an early build of Animal Forest, maybe one that looked dramatically different at first, but was refined and later changed to not have to use the Nintendo 64 DD's internal clock, and getting to see what those similarities would have looked like would be incredible. Though, to this day, we still don't have any idea of what this game even looked like. But with the fact that it did have a scheduled appearance for Space World 2000, means that there still was a chance that some sort of build existed. Also, the timing of when this was allegedly supposed to be shown off still ties into the timeline of Animal Forest's development as the Japanese version of the game released in 2001. So it is still very possible that this game was turned into Animal Forest in one way or another, though the virtual pet idea was scrapped in favor of the villagers and the way we know the game today. Now this next one's really interesting and has already been covered by YouTuber L Supersonic Q, pretty extensively actually. But just in case you didn't know about it, there is a mystery about a Nintendo DS contest that was allegedly run in Sweden during the time period around 2006. And essentially these DSs were rumored to be special prizes you could win. And there was a lot of vagueness behind the contest itself, but also what the prizes were. Essentially these designs kind of looked like there were different seasons represented for the DSs. Though early on in the mystery, it looked like only three 
seasons out of four were even posted online. But then the rabbit hole got deeper and the fourth one surfaced. It gets really wild after a while. L Supersonic Q did a really great job breaking this entire story down. But long story short, while there are only limited images online and nobody actually fully knows how many of these DSs exist, there could just be one of each season, but there could also be two of each season. There's been searches to figure out who owns them, when they've ever sold online, and while there has been some pretty awesome progress made towards this mystery, I'm not too sure we'll ever see a video surface showcasing all four of these DS's hands-on in some way or another, making this one of the bigger mysteries of Nintendo Animal Crossing merchandise that are still lost. It would probably fall under partially found, but it's still a really interesting story nonetheless. Okay, I wasn't even sure if I was going to include this next one, but I'm going to bring it up anyways, but Animal Crossing Plaza for the Wii U. It was an Animal Crossing side application, kind of like a social media service through the Wii U, where you could look at Animal Crossing stuff on there and post things onto the Miiverse. You could collect stamps and even vote in polls. Yeah, this is what we got instead of a main Animal Crossing game for the Wii U. There were a few distributed items for Animal Crossing New Leaf through here as well, but ultimately it was removed from the e shop on December of 2014, though it could be accessed to players who had downloaded it still and could still make posts from the app until it was fully discontinued in 2017. So technically we can't access this anymore. We can't just jump onto the game and look around and see what it was like because it was an online service that shut down. However, it was heavily documented because this happened during the era where YouTube existed, fortunately. So it's not really lost media as much as it's like archived media. So you can see why I was kind of hesitant to add to the list, but I still thought it was interesting enough to bring up here. Now for this next one, remember how we talked about how Cabbage was supposed to be shown off Space World 2000, but never showed up? Well, interestingly enough, Animal Forest for the Nintendo 64, which released only in Japan, was shown off at Space World 2000. And during this long demo footage that was shown off, we can actually see Animal Forest gameplay on the screen in this re-upload from nine years ago. It's a pretty short demo, not showing off way too much that we can tell from this footage, but there are various interviews and references from magazines and other press that were at Space World in 2000 saying that Animal Forest was playable on the floor at the event. It doesn't seem like there's any footage of anyone playing Animal Forest at 2000, but if the game was in fact playable, which it seems like it was, it's very likely the fact that this game was delayed shortly after this event by about two months, it's likely that this game was not the retail version of the game that would be released in April 2001. Once again means that there was a unique build of Animal Forest that was shown off exclusively at this event. And that's what many game preservationists thought as well. And sure enough, in 2020, there was a partial source code for the game that was leaked, which contained a lot of assets that were not in the final release of the game. For instance, there was this cat, there was a texture for Wisp, who's not even in the game, there was a bunch of different icons, and there was also files found showing off the exterior and the interior of the museum. Mind you, the museum wasn't even in Animal Forest on the N64 and wouldn't be included until Animal Crossing released on the GameCube. We can also see an alternate interior for Tom Nook's store, one that we could actually see in that footage that they showed off at Space World. So while this leak is very impressive and it shows a ton of unused things, we still don't have our hands on a full version of this beta build of Animal Forest. If we can get the full leak of the game, we would be able to actually play on the file and explore things ourselves instead of having to sort through the files manually. So this one also falls under partially found, but the rest of it's still lost media. Now I would like to do a deep dive going into all of the cut files throughout the Animal Crossing franchise, so if you'd like to see that type of content, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it when we upload it soon. Okay, and then one more that probably not that many people are looking for, but I still wanted to bring it up, but there is likely an early Animal Crossing New Horizons build that we obviously don't have access to. It's a newer game and it's beta footage, but we do know based off seeing the first reveal trailer for Animal Crossing New Horizons, a game that would see a delay as well. There are some differences between what we see in this trailer and what we actually 
actually got in the game's release. Like the grass patterns are different and there were things like colored fencing, which we couldn't get until later on. If this ever got leaked, we could get a ton of information as to what type of content might've been planned for Animal Crossing New Horizons that never even made its way into the game. And I just wanted to mention that real quick as well as one other really interesting thing. You might remember a bunch of the rumors of a Nintendo Switch Pro where everyone suspected a stronger version of the Nintendo Switch would be coming, especially one that would maybe let you play games in 4K. Well, interestingly enough, the social media page for Animal Crossing actually shared a screenshot that was rendered in 4K, which is something that the Animal Crossing New Horizon game itself cannot do. And some players had went into their Switch files or whatever and showcased the differences of if you took a screenshot playing natively on a Nintendo Switch, showing that the 4K version isn't actually possible with the resolution and the clarity that the social media page had done. And there was only like one instance of them actually doing that. Otherwise it was all just screenshots from a native Nintendo Switch. There also have been moments where the social media had posted an island or an example of something for their page. And it has furniture set up in invalid locations, something the game wouldn't let you do, like putting stuff too close to a cliff, which meant that likely the team running the social media page has access to an Animal Crossing New Horizons build that nobody else has access to, one that lets them put items down wherever they want and also possibly play in 4K resolution. This obviously fueled rumors for that Switch Pro that never actually came out, but it is very interesting nonetheless. So this interesting, ambiguous version of Animal Crossing New Horizons that may be hidden away in Nintendo's social media office somewhere could potentially exist. And will we ever find that? Probably not, but who knows? It's worth noting nonetheless. So what did you think of these lost media items? Do you like it when we do deep dives into these type of topics? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more videos like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all soon with a brand new video.